Hello, and welcome to this episode of our Analyst Angle series. I'm your host, Shelley Kramer, Managing Director and Principal Analyst here at the Cube Research. And today I'm joined by Chandra Shaker, LSP, the Managing Director, Zoho Canada, to talk about Zoho's updates to its analytics platform, Zoho Analytics, and diving into some of its custom features and integrations. LSP, it's great to have you. Thank you very much, Shelley, for having me on the show. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm so excited about this conversation. So to set the stage here a little bit, I want to start with data. There has never been a time when data is more important than it is today. And yet organizations the world over struggle with managing, organizing, and getting value from the data that they have. The key challenges they face here are things like data velocity and diversity, data quality, complex analytic needs that, that the businesses have, broad adoption within organizations, and of course, the rapid change of the rapid pace of the change of technology. So with the increasing amount and diversity of data, the need for high quality data, of course, has never been greater. And it's a significant part of the analytics journey. Another challenge is in making analytics accessible to everyone in the organi organization or certainly to everyone who needs it and then facilitating adoption. And these are significant areas of focuses for many businesses today. So to meet these challenges, organizations are addressing data, data management challenges and, and including strategies that provide improved access to data throughout the organization. That's one of the reasons I'm so excited about this new and improved Zoho Analytics but that's and that's why I think Zoho's moved here with a supercharged Zoho Analytics offering is timely and attractive. So very much looking forward to this conversation. Likewise. LS, LSP, before we dive in more fully, I'd love for you to share a little bit about your career backstory, a little bit about your journey, what you know, where you've come from, how you landed at Zoho. And but for starters, I want you to share with us. Yeah, you know, I'm calling you LSP, which is an abbreviation of your last name, which I know is the name that you go by. But share with our audience, if you would, that impressive full name of yours. Listen, Shelley, you asked for it. If I tell you my, if I if I expand my abbreviation, you have to call me the whole name. My name is Chandra Shaker Lala Petrinivas Prasanna. So the Lala Petrinivas Prasanna is my last name, abbreviated LSP, Lightest Supersymmetric Particle. There you go. That's kind of, is, are there have you ever uh, figured out if there are more or less letters in your last name than in supercalifragilisticexpialidocious? Uh, no. <laughs> we should do that. All right, let's hear it. Your career backstory. Yeah, uh, well, I have been with Soho for the last 23 years now, and I landed in Soho in 2001 just right about out of my college after my first internship at another company. And since then, the journey has continued. I am kind of a boomerang. I was with Zoho full-time between 2001 and 2006. And then between 2006 and 17, I was an independent consultant implementing Zoho solutions globally. And at that time, Zoho was <clears throat> had the solution around for telcos. So I've been in the telco industry, and that's where my journey with data and analytics started, financial network analysis, real-time data analysis for SLA monitoring and all those nice things. And uh, when I boomeranged back in Zoho in 2017, I kind of uh, got into more of the business application side. And then because of the fact that I was so closely working on the data side in the industry, I gravitated towards Zoho Analytics, which I have in the past implemented as solutions as well. Okay. So that's been my journey. And now uh, the focus is growing the region here in Canada. And uh, like all uh, people in Zoho, uh, you cannot be far away from a product. It's something that we gravitate towards. People have different, uh, and with so many different products. You obviously have an attachment to a product or a line of uh, uh, solution that you have been working on. You get uh, pretty close to it. And that's the story here as well. Well, I love that, you know, and, and I do think that I, I talk to a lot of people who are boomerangers. And what I love about that is I think it speaks a lot to the culture of an organization. You know, you don't go back to a company that, that you know, it that you don't love where you don't see opportunity that you're not passionate about. So I really like that. I think it, it says a lot. And I also know quite a bit about Zoho and, and the company's mission and things like that. So I can and understand. I would say this, Shelley. Zoho has defined my professional character. 
it's yeah. a company that the, the the spirit of entrepreneurship that instills right from when I joined the company back in 2001 we were 250 people now we are about 18,000 people but then the sense of energy the sense of putting your hands up or taking ownership that hasn't changed that is still a very much a part of the DNA and if you're yeah. used to this going into organizations that are way more structured where lines are drawn around the boundaries that you can or cannot cross it just becomes uh, it just becomes hard you know what yeah. I mean so, well, I will say this, you know, again, I, I I have a deep understanding of, you know, Zoho and, and the commitment of leadership and passion for doing good and serving others. And, you know, this is this is obviously a business in the business to make money, but and serve customers. But the reality of it is there's so much more to Zoho. And that's that's really what I want to talk about here um, for a minute before we dive into the new Zoho analytics. So so thing of it is, is Zoho is in no way new to the analytics game. I mean, the company started as a cloud BI vendor in 2009. It's evolved its offerings along the way. And, and now I think it serves in you know, 17,000 plus customers. So talk with me a little bit about that journey and Zoho's focus, if you would. Great that you bring this question up because not many people know about the fact that when we launched the offering in 2009, we were perhaps one of the pioneers to offer a cloud-first uh, analytics platform, a self-service BI platform or right. solution at the time. And uh, it was a pretty interesting journey because if you if you look at the uh, offerings of Zoho in general, you know, we have tools for sales, marketing, finance, and so on. Right. It was only a question of time. It was not a question of if, it was just a question of when we would come up with a tool that would analyze data across all of these tools. And that's where the journey essentially began. Okay, so we started off doing analytics of the data from CRM and projects and so on. But as we went down that path, we realized that there is a data model that can be created where we can just not necessarily map data only from Zoho CRM, you could as well bring data from Microsoft Dynamics 365. You could bring data from Salesforce. And then the beauty is we have a common data model where everything maps into, and then help organizations with the analytics journey. Because all that you had to do was connect to your business application, be it a CRM or a projects tool. And then we automatically created the data model for analysis. We automatically create the reports and charts and dashboards that whole experience, right, in terms of how organizations can get to insights and how fast they can get to it is indeed a differentiator in terms of the offering. So, yeah, it's been, uh, when we launched the solution in 2009, um, we had about 100 customers by the end of first year. Cut to chase, and as of end of 2023, we have 17,000 customers who are using Zoho Analytics as a standalone BI solution. Right. The reason I want to highlight that, Shelly, is people think when I say 17,000 customers, obviously, uh, when you look at Zoho, we make 55 plus applications. So people are thinking, are they mostly using it with other Zoho applications? Now, out of the standalone customers, 60% of the customers are using data from other non-Zoho data sources to analyze the data. So that's one aspect of it. That's one no, aspect. and I think that's an incredibly important part of the equation, and that's really why I wanted to start with this because I think that in some t in some instances, you know, people hear Zoho and they think CRM, and you know, there's just so much more to what this company and what this platform can do. And so I really thought that it was important to start with that. So and in addition to that, Shelley, I want to add what, another point. We talked about the seventeen thousand customers that we serve as a standalone solution. But then in the context of the Zoho ecosystem, where we have the customer experience platform, the employee experience platform, yeah. and the marketing automation platform, and the Zoho One, the all-in-one suite, analytics is embedded natively into it. Yeah. And across the Zoho ecosystem of products, solutions that we have, we have 70,000 businesses that are using analytics on a daily basis. It's not any, it's not that it requires any integration. It's just built in. It comes in as a dashboard when you access right. your CX platform. It comes in as a dashboard when you access your uh, employee experience platform. Everything yeah. is so embedded. And that's the power of the platform where it has a standalone composable capability. And then there is the ecosystem impact, which is massive too, because of the absence of an analytic solution. You saw what happened in the industry. Salesforce had to go and acquire Tableau. 
because this is the game. Everybody has data, yeah. the insights, and what insights can trigger in terms of action is what is driving business outcomes. Yeah, so it's absolutely. such a critical part of the Zoho story. Yeah, I believe that is very true. So big news this week then from Zoho with the launch of new Zoho Analytics. So, you know, let's talk a little bit, LSP, about the key data analytics challenges that you see customers facing today. The biggest challenge, you actually started the, uh, the conversation in a very interesting way. All of the challenges that you highlighted are such big challenges. The fact that organizations have to contend with data velocity and diversity. I think it was a beautiful term that you use because a typical organization today uses more than 100 applications to run their business. The very fact that they need 100 plus applications means they have 100 different data sources. Yeah. And the diversity comes from the fact that some data can be transactional data, some can be very unstructured data, and you still have to process them. And now we're adding this whole notion of getting data from sensors in real time as you start working on your ESG reporting. You want to have them in real time as well. You want to pick data from sensors, process them. I think that's such a huge challenge in itself. Yeah. So that's that's one of the biggest challenges. The next one is around the quality of data. Yeah, I, I have I have basically, um, you know, I fed my system from the host. There's tons of data. But then what about the data quality? What about who can access this data and how can they access this data? The strictures, the governance, and all those aspects. That's a that's a big challenge in itself. All those little details. That's, that, that is where I think I think that's where, like, again, uh, the the absolute cliche, the garbage in, garbage out. It still is a very valid term to use in this context because no matter how much data you have, that's not still winning the game. Yeah. It's, it's, if data is oil, you just need to get it refined first to be making it useful to power something, power decisions in this case, right? Yeah. So that's that's the uh, that's the other challenge. The third one is because of the technology uh, leap that we have been taking in terms of be it the infrastructure uh, that we now have access to, the GPUs and all the other nice things around processing and the capability to process data faster and more effectively, what's happening is the ask for more diagnostics and prescriptive insights is becoming a common ask because yeah. while we have been looking at analytics from a rare view mirror perspective, looking at what's happening in my business and then making guesses, they want to take the guesswork out of this decision making, make yeah. it more effective. How can we do that? So that's where um, you know the demand is going for from telling organizations what happened to your business to why it's happening and how can you address this. So this is the expectation of businesses today, how do they, they get to insights faster and then trigger actions based on that? So, well, well, and that really is, I think, addressed in these three main components of the Zoho Analytics platform as a whole. And, and that's, you know, centered on data prep, data management, self-service yeah. BI and, and embedded BI, right? Absolutely. Yes. So and, talk and with me a little bit about those components. So. These specific challenges that we just highlighted are the specific problems that we wanted to solve as a part of this launch. And so we have enhanced our data integration capability. We support or we integrate data from over 500 data sources as is. Now we have expanded that to other data sources, uh, new business applications, such as uh, the Oracle NetSuite integration for, ana for analytics, uh, the uh, the Monday.com, the Qualtrics data, and all these business application integration. And then you have real-time data processing, where we now support, as a part of this launch, uh, the ability to process data from Kafka, Cloud PubSub, and PubNub. So you can bring in streaming data. Th think of data from sensors. You can bring it into the analytics layer and start creating the reports and charts. And then apart from that, there's integration with uh, Databricks and other such uh, in our cloud data uh, providers. Right. So that's on the data integration side. And now from a data preparation side perspective, we have the ability to visually create uh, these data pipelines. So the data studio always did support the ability to uh, process data and cleanse data, but then it was a point and click kind of a function. But now we have made it very visual. And then we've also have introduced a natural language layer 
to process the data and cleanse the data. You don't have to necessarily use point and click and visual representations. You can actually use Ask Zia in the context of data management and then you know, use prompts to clean your data and make it ready for analysis. Oh, so that's yeah. on the data management side. Uh, you want me to go ahead? Uh, Absolutely. Okay. So when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, the uh, analytics side, we are in, uh, we have infused Gen AI in a very contextual way. And when we look at Gen AI or uh, the infusion of AI contextually in each of these layers in the context of analytics, um, Shelley, one of the challenges that we want to solve is the access to data, right? access to insights. No matter how good your BI practice is, one of the biggest challenges in organizations is who can have access to insights and how easy it is for them to have access to the insights. Because on one hand, you have the challenge from a financial perspective where if you want more people to access data, then you have to buy more licenses. Right. Right. And then also the challenge is how do you make someone who is in the sales team or customer support team access uh, data from the analytics layer where they have to leave their operational tools and jump into yet another analytics application and then access the data. So we are thinking of how do you bring all this in the context of their business workflows. So for example, uh, the Ask Sia engine using which you can interact with data uh, with natural language, instead of a user having to come into Zoho analytics platform to access it, we now have made it available as a bot where you can access it from Microsoft Teams. Meaning any question, any interaction that you want to have with the data is going to happen in the context of your conversation with your colleague. You're saying, let's say uh, you're, caught, you're talking to your finance department and then you want to pull up some reports. In the context of Teams, you can be right there and then say, show me the revenue forecast for the next three months. And boom, what's going to happen is you're going to see a report even as you're chatting with your uh, finance team, and then you see the report right there. I think that kind of penetration, that kind of uh, you know, pushing the boundaries is critical because uh, you know, organizations and tools are getting better at analyzing data. I mean, now we, there is a whole lot of awareness around data quality and how best you can create insights. Now the challenge is how do you push it? How does a frontline worker who picks up your call at the airline company looks at Shelly? Okay, Shelly is a frequent flyer. She's been flying the last seven years with us, and she has a complaint. I want to give her a refund. Do I even have any insights in front of me? I am not. As a customer support agent, I just see that yeah, your, your membership number, I then uh, your, your last flight, and then you miss something, and I'm just going to say, no, I'm not going to give you any discounts, I'm not going to give you any refunds, I'm not going to give you that additional free package that you're calling me for because I don't have the data. So how do you put information in the hands of frontline workers and cut out the technology barrier that exists? How do you make it simple? How do you make it something? And that, I mean, that's yeah. what everybody wants. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. what everybody is. You know, when I when I see when I think about this, you know, the self service business intelligence and the and the embedded BI capabilities, the reality of it is that there was a time when only business analysts had access to business intelligence data, yeah. right? Yeah. And and today, many people throughout the organization need it, and. To, to do their jobs more effectively, to better serve customers more efficiently, more accurately, all of that stuff. But it, these kind of capabilities, in my mind, really up-level a skill set because I could be a part of the sales team or I could be a part of the marketing team and I'm not a data analyst. Yep. The access to this data, the self-service quality, the ease of use, um, the ability to query and prompt using natural language, that sort of thing. I mean, that does, to me, it up-levels everybody's capabilities within the organization. And I think that's an important step forward. That is just one set of audience there, right there, that we talked about, people who want to create reports and charts and stuff. But then let's go back to the uh, instance of the customer support agent. They are just looking, even if we give them access to data, one of the challenges, how do they interpret it? Yeah. Right? And that's where capabilities around the narration that we have added, and this is a, a capability called Zia Insights in the product, 
which can basically uh, you know, take the information from a specific report and when you click on Zia Insights in the product or when you, uh, when you launch the narrative engine, narration engine, it is going to explain what's happening. It's going to bubble up the inferences so that you can just read it in a, uh, in, in a verbose way from the, from the report, right? And now in that same context, we are able to flag some anomalies and then have you, uh, you know, diagnose it. So we are, so the idea is it's access is one thing, you know, giving access is probably just, you know, uh, a username or just embedding an engine, but how do you help them to interpret the data? That yeah. itself is a critical part of driving adoption. Absolutely. Giving them a chart is one thing, but how do you help them? How do you give them, uh, you know, you know, orchestrate their journey to understand the data and then pick uh, insight-based decision? So yeah. I think it's all about, you know, uh, putting AI specifically in context to drive adoption. And that's what we are trying to solve. You know, mm-hmm. we, you know it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of thinking. It's a lot of conversations with customers, talking to them about the deeper problems. Yeah, your tool is great, but then how can I make my customer support to be more responsive, to make, uh, take decisions more, uh, you know, with, with confidence? That's yeah. what organizations want. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that I'm most excited about with the launch of the updated Zoho Analytics is the new data management hub. And I know that this includes a lot of what we were just talking about, you know, data integration, data pipeline management, metrics management. Would you talk with me a little bit more about that data management hub? Uh, we did touch about uh, talk about data management hub in a specific way about how we integrate data. We have the visual pipelines. But one additional thing that I want to really highlight as a part of this conversation, Shelley, is the metrics store. Yes. So it, it has become so important that while organizations now have a good hang of you know, how, to, how to control the data, manage and prepare, now when the data is prepared by the data engineer or the data expert, do you want to give all the... Uh, uh, you know, do you want to just give access to this cleaned up raw data to the business user? Or would you much rather create a set of metrics that are relevant for specific business lines? Yeah. Let's, let's take a specific example. I get data from Zoho CRM into my data prep layer. I do all the deduplication, remove unwanted columns, fix all the data inconsistencies, and make it available for analytics. Now, at this point, the role of a data engineer or a data uh, data analyst is done. They've created the models. It's now, do you really want the business users to access all the raw information or would you much rather create a layer where, for example, the business user of the sales team wants to know from the CRM data, what is the win rate? What is the average deal closing time? And instead of giving them access to raw data, you create such metrics Yeah. and they only access these metrics. Now, Another thing about the metrics layer is you don't have to come to Zoho Analytics to access these metrics. You can embed them directly into the CRM system or your marketing system or whatever that tool is. So you can create a metric store for the sales business unit, marketing business unit, and so on and so forth. So the ability to compose and control even the access to raw data so that people are not creating custom models, people are not creating you know, unwanted yeah. formulas and stuff in the engine. Again, it's all about governance. The metrics layer is a cute, cute way of creating additional layer of governance. While the data is good, I don't want to give access and have the business users drink from the hose. I can give them more qualitative uh, metrics that they can access and go from there. Yeah, makes perfect sense. So we talked a little bit earlier about generative AI, but let's talk about Gen AI and diagnostic analytics, which I understand are key features being introduced by Zoho here and things that I'm very excited about. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I know that we've got an enhanced Zoho Insights engine, it includes diagnostic analytics. Um, you know, let's talk a little bit though about why this is significant and why these features are something that are sure to resonate with customers. Again, the, 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 the business outcome that we want to enable with Gen AI is clearly to drive better adoption. And this is exactly what we're doing. So 
uh, the decision intelligence capability, the diagnostic intelligence capability is all about explaining what's happening. And then if you want to further do key driver analysis and then go from there, you can. For example, let's take a specific example, right? So you're looking at uh, the ad spend on um, ad spend on Facebook and let's say the sales revenue on a monthly basis. And then you suddenly start seeing a dip in your sales revenue. Now, uh, the narration engine can tell you what's happening. And then it, it could probably come back with a red flag saying, hey, your revenue is going down, though your Facebook ad spend is going up. So if you want to go and understand why, what campaigns within Facebook ad campaigns that you've done is not uh, you know, bringing the bank for the buck for you. So it can basically give you that analysis. And then from there, from the fact that the key driver analysis, it getting you to those key, uh, uh, you know, metrics or key uh, data points that are impacting your sale, you can then take a decision and then say, hey, I, I don't want to run these campaigns for the next three months. And I want to see if this is some way of ma managing the ROI. That's one yeah. way of doing it. And the next step is, again, it's about how quickly can we make users take actions? That's all there is to it. In the absence of a feature like this, you're basically putting things together. Yeah, you're looking at the chart and then you're putting a paper and pen together and then trying to figure out what's going on. Here, we are basically helping you to delve one level deeper. So instead of just answering what's happening, we are now going to tell you why it's happening. And then based on that, you make a decision. I like it. So the newest iteration of Zoho Analytics introduces something that I think is very going to make developers very happy, the Zoho Data Studio. And, you know, I, I know that there are, the, the developer community is an important part of the user base here. Talk with me a little bit about the Zoho Data Studio and, you know, why you designed it the way you did and, and really what it's intended for. Great question. By the way, Shelly, it's not Data Studio, it's DSML Studio. Okay. Got it. DSML Studio. Yeah. So, to me, honestly, as a develop a former developer and someone who's been in the data world for a long time, I think this feature is super critical because what's happening today is every CXO out there is trying to figure out how do you bring your data to AI and AI to your data. This is every CXO's number one challenge today. And this is where we're coming in. We're looking at a convergence of data science and machine learning in the context of business intelligence. The reality today, Shelly, is you have BI tools in one silo. You, ha you have your DSML, data science and machine learning experts using different set of tools in a completely different silo. These worlds aren't colliding. There is no way for them to collide at this point. And this is where we see a tremendous opportunity. And I think, I, and I have a strong belief that this is where the market is also going to go, where you want to bring all the data science and machine learning things that you're doing in your organization in the context of your business data so that your business user is aware of these, you know, what are the predictions for your business? What kind of additional diagnostics can I do, right? And that's where the DSML Studio comes in, where we have two capabilities. One that is targeted as expert data scientists, where they can start creating their machine learning algorithms in Zoho Analytics. Or even better, if they have, let's say, um, you know, somebody in the airline industry is using Zoho Analytics and they have a whole set of uh, machine learning libraries that they've already created, they can import those libraries over here. And the beauty is, all of a sudden, your business intelligence data, it's just not looking at real-time information. It also has the ability to go through these machine learning models that have been trained and created over time in your organization. And that is going to give you a whole new dimension of insights that is going to prompt different set of actions. Or, you know, it just helps you to be uh, having a greater pulse of your business. That's one set of users, the expert data science, data scientists. And then if you're looking at medium and smaller businesses, you have these hustlers, these, uh, these, these, uh, you know, uh, business people who basically go learn about, hey, how best should I create or what kind of data, you know, machine learning model should I create on my sales data versus my customer support data? So we have an auto ML function 
where we have a core set of libraries that we have packaged. And based on the data, if it's, let's say, a time series data or a non-time series data, you want to do some kind of uh, you know, prediction, let's say churn prediction of your customers. Let's take an example. I don't know how to write uh, Python code. Instead, what you can do is, hey, here's this data set. Can you run a prediction model, which is a set of libraries that we have prepackaged? We basically take in the table information and then automatically train based on a, a set of uh, you know rules. And then we even give the best uh, score based on the uh, machine learning models that you apply on this data set. And then on the recommendation, if you say uh, one, uh, let's say there are three algorithms that are applied on this data set and one algorithm comes out with a higher score, you can choose to deploy it. No code, nothing. Servo Analytics is doing the heavy lifting. And this is where, again, we, we see that a lot of people are, I mean, some of our customers um, are essentially very happy about it because even the business users want to start creating machine learning models and trying to do prediction, anomaly detection, and all these diagnoses and stuff like that, Shelly. So this is, in my view, is the number one highlight. And I, we, we, had, we are doing a lot of great things, but to me, what I'm excited about personally is the introduction of DSML Studio in the context of business intelligence. I think it's, it's critical. It is critical, and this is where I said, uh, you bring AI to the data, wherein you're bringing all the machine learning uh, capabilities into the BI layer. On the other hand, we talked about the data management and data preparation hub where you're creating good quality data. So right. bringing AI to quality data, right? So that's, uh, that's to me is super exciting. Well, and I will say that this is a part of th this announcement that I'm very excited about too, because to me, anything that you can do to facilitate um, advancement by the developer community. I mean, you've got a, a, a cadre of brilliant, creative creators, right? And so giving them, a, you know, sort of a place where they can go and, you know, the Python code studio is so cool, but being able to write and run those models and import existing models and test and deploy, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's kind of like giving them a sandbox to play in. Yep. that is powered by, you know, Zoho Analytics and so many other things. And it's just like, to me, that is facilitating innovation. Absolutely, Shelly. I love it. I love it. Yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So LSP, one of the key features of the new Zoho Analytics platform to me is its extensibility as well as the access framework. And this allows users to trigger actions directly from the BI platform using Zoho Flow. Talk me through that, will you? Absolutely. When it comes to the BI world, uh, Shelley, data is all uh, data's, data integration is an arms race. No matter how many data integrations we do, our customers want to add more and more data sources. And we saw, right, we see that an average enterprise today uses more than 100 applications. So we, it's not possible for Zoho to build all the integration. So that's why we have launched a low-code studio in the context of the analytics app where you can bring in your own data sources very easily. You don't have to write any code. You just have to authenticate, specify the kind of uh, data fetches you want, and then the connector is built. Now, with this connector, you can use it only in the context of your business, or if you're interested to publish this in Zoho's marketplace, you can. Meaning you can write an extension and just use it within your business or monetize it by publishing it. Let's take, for example, a scenario like this. Let's say I'm, uh, I'm an airline business and I have some custom data sources that I want to bring in data from. We make it super simple using the low-code studio to do that. Now, I can also monetize this by publishing because I know that other airline companies that are using Zoho Analytics will absolutely require this app. Right. So I give them that opportunity. That's one part of it. So that's the uh, low code okay. studio for integration. And, and to me, this again speaks to um, the importance of focusing on the developer community and empowering them to do what it is they love to do, which is build and develop and, and to be able to monetize the things they create. I think that's really attractive. It's it's funny that we're even having this conversation at a certain level. Think about early 2000s. We wanted to go away from developers to do our reporting and charts, and we wanted all about self-service. And now this is full circle again. In a self-service platform, we are adding more and more developer capabilities. 
I, I mean, it's 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 fascinating, but that's that's what we're seeing. That's the, that's what is emerging right now, right? Now, you also talked asked me about actions framework. It, it's kind of interesting and important that we have it because, do you imagine being in front of a dashboard all day to figure out any violations that are happening? Let's say, I have my sales forecast report, and uh, I set up threshold saying if there is uh, a forecast dropping by more than 2% month on month, I want to be notified. Visually, I can basically see a threshold line and then things going down, but I'm not going to be sitting in front of that report all day. Right. So I want to take uh, an action. So if that happens, then trigger a notification. Now, in the past, we've done notifications with emails and in-app notifications saying, hey, uh, the, the threshold is violated. But now, because we have integration uh, capability and actions framework that we have developed, we can basically report if as long as a third party application where you want this notification to be sent, as long as it has a webhook or URL, we can notify that application. Let's say I can notify a, a CRM system saying that, hey, your sales forecast is going down. It can be a notification into my CRM system. Yeah, That's one way. The other way is we also have integration with Zoho Flow, which by design has integration with over 500 applications, as I told you earlier. Right. Now, when the sales forecast is going down, I could basically send a message in the manager or the leadership Slack channel saying, hey, this is what's happening in your business. So the actions basically, again, how quickly can you put insights in the hands of a business user or an exec for them to take decisions? That's what is driving this actions framework. Again, everything is an outcome that we want to enable within a business. Yes, technically, yeah, this is integration here, there, all plumb lines and everything. But the bottom line is how quickly can you make this information available and how quickly can this allow an organization to take an action? Right. And and I think there's also the adoption piece of it, right? We want it widely adopted throughout the organization. Yes. And in order for that to happen, it has to, you know, the functionality has to be exciting and useful for people. And I think that, I think you've managed to do that here. Yep. yep. I think you've managed to do that. So the Zelho Analytics portal, who is it available to and when can customers start using it? Uh, we're launching the Zoho Analytics, the all new Zoho Analytics AI powered self-service platform on the 12th of September. It's going okay. to be available in all our data centers. Uh, and then the uh, the on-prem edition, by the way, we never talked about it. Zoho Analytics is also available as an on-prem application. It is not necessarily consumed only on Zoho's own uh, cloud infrastructure. It can be deployed on hyperscalers such as Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. And we also have customers in highly regulated industries uh, serving, let's say, government or finance, where they have the on-prem edition where they deploy it within their own networks. So we, again, yeah. have a whole set of uh, customers that we're uh, you know, are reaching out to. Something, so the, for, something for everyone. Something for everyone. And then the on-prem edition will kind of uh, have a catch up with the features of the cloud version as of October 2024. Okay. All right. Well, LSP, as we wrap the conversation, I know that you, like me, talk with customers on a regular basis about the challenges they face, especially as it relates to data and analytics. Mm -hmm. Many of them aren't there yet as it relates to getting arms around data management, access to data, and the ability to actually extract real-time insights from the, that data to help drive better decisions, uh, better business decisions, of course. So what's one piece of advice you would leave our viewing or our listening audience with to help them move this along and get to where they need to be? I think it's all about access to good quality data with a reporting platform that is flexible, which allows them to have all the, uh, you know, quick to do things like uh, you know auto analysis function and then analyzing the data and so on. But then the ability to bring in their business context, whatever that be, in the pipeline or in the workflow of your BI, that is critical. The convergence, as I talked about earlier, is critical. I think start thinking about it now. It's not gonna, have, there's no need to delay that. Yeah. Uh, the convergence between machine learning and, and, and a BI, it needs to happen today. And we have, we are making those capabilities available. So think of it right now. So it's all about bringing everything together, good quality data, 
good analytics platform that have self-service and Gen AI capabilities, and also the capability to bring in your own machine learning models in your BI workflows. Think of it today. This is the reality. It's not the future. It is here and now. It is now. Yeah. And so if you're still thinking about it, start making a plan to move forward because the clock is ticking. All right. So LSP, we talked about the the portal and its availability. I think the one thing that we haven't yet touched on is the BI fabric. And I know this is an important part of this, you know, Zoho Analytics new launch. So talk with me a little bit about why that's so relevant. It's extremely relevant, uh, Shelley, because this is something that we have worked uh, very hard on. The reality in any typical business today is they have multiple BI tools. The sales department may be using Tableau, the marketing department may be using Power BI, and the finance department may be using Zoho Analytics, right? Typical scenario. There is no uh, customer of ours where we just see Zoho Analytics as the only BI platform. That's not the reality. Yeah. So we wanted to solve a specific problem here. We Zoho Analytics has a portal builder, and we have integrated Power BI and Tableau into it. So if you're an organization, along the lines of what I just mentioned, where the marketing team is using Tableau, sales team is using uh, analytic, I mean uh, Power BI, and uh, finance team is using Zoho Analytics, you can create a single pane of glass where you can bring in the reports and dashboards from Power BI, Zoho Analytics, and Tableau into a single interface. That again, driving better adoption, right? It's, it's how do you make it simple? Instead of people jumping into multiple tools and then figuring out which report to access and whatnot, you just create a simple, beautiful portal and organize everything and make it available. I'm a big fan of simple and easy buttons and things that are intuitive. (laughs) So that's music to my ears. I love that. So LSP, as we wrap the conversation, I know that you, like me, talk with customers on a regular basis about the challenge they face, especially as it relates to data and analytics. And I know that the reality of it is that many of them aren't there yet as it relates to getting arms around data management, access to data, and the ability to to extract real-time insights from data that help drive business decisions. So what's one piece of advice you would leave with these people, all these business leaders to help move out, to, to move this process along and get to where they need to be from, you know, an effective management and use of data standpoint. I think the pillars, the three pillars that are important today for any decision maker is to think about how do you make good quality data available for the analytics layer? Right. And how can I bring in AI into the same context? So good data quality, good analytical capability, and the ability to bring in AI in a single layer or in a single workflow. I think this is the challenge that organizations are facing today. And our platform, it has specific capabilities and we have taken this approach of the convergence that is happening and we have built a platform that's gonna address all three problems in a single flow. And it's not a futuristic problem that we're trying to solve. The problem that we're trying to solve is here and it's now. It is here and it is now. And, you know, the reality, I I do hate to, you know, sometimes get tired of the, uh, of the line that we hear so much that, you know, if you don't, if you don't move this forward, it's going to have significant business implications and, you know, you're not going to be competitive. And, but the reality of it is that is incredibly true. I mean, this is not a, when I get around to it, or if we can find the budget or, you know, this is not a problem that should you, that you should just sit out there and wait until you have time to focus on it. This is something that we need to address today. And not just that, Shelley, as, as being the engineer in my head, it is going to be an iterative process. I talk about the new launch. Four years from now, I'll be talking about another launch where we're going to be pushing the boundaries even further. So you yeah. got to catch this train in some station at some point. Yes, and absolutely. So get on the train. Yeah. That's our advice. That's our advice. Well, this has been a fantastic conversation, and I knew it would be. Um, Thank you so much for joining me today, LSP, Managing Director, Zoho Canada. I so appreciate you sharing details about Zoho's new analytics platform, Zoho Analytics. 
The functionality here is clearly designed to help customers up-level their data and analytics game. And I'm looking, really looking forward to hearing customer feedback in the coming months as they begin to immerse themselves in these new capabilities. And I'm sure you're going to have some great stories to share with me at that point in time. So I look forward to that. Uh, to our viewers and listening audience, I'm your host, Shelly Kramer from the Cube Research. Thank you so much for joining us today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you've not yet done that. And keep it here on the Cube, which is your source for enterprise and emerging tech news. And with that, we'll see you next time.